Alright, uh, welcome to Media Player, <laughs> Major Freak. I'm just going to play this short clip um, about how I go about doing my stagecoach doctrine. Uh, stagecoach, uh, I named it because I have a Griffin core stagecoach. Uh, I first came up with the idea of the mollusk to censor damp anything trying to snipe us. Uh, mollusk, uh, calling it the shotgun. It just felt like a uh, rear turret gunner. It was pretty cool. And I was like, hey, cool. Um, the Draugr uh, is named the Clydesdale, or the horse, the anchor, uh, the squad leader. Um, and the Crucifier, because I realized a Hecate can't be censor damped. <laughs> at 100 kilometers, it's impossible. So i easily be able to um, tracking disrupt it, which works. So a dicky seat, which is the rear seat of a stagecoach. So dicky seat, shotgun, um, Clydesdale, um, and stagecoach. I'm not gonna talk about drivers or passengers. We just cut those out because, hello, we're the players, right? So the idea is to assign targets for jammers for your griffins and know who you're, you know, is there a Picate on field? Can I get away with not fielding um, a support vessel? Can I go one Draugr and five? So I have to be too lazy to log in this one. Uh, singularity, whatever. Um, five griffins. Can I get away with using five griffins? Or do I need something to damp something? Like, say, if they have a sniper that I need sensor dampening for, I'll use the Mollus, or I'll probably go with a Crucifier if I see a long-range Hecate, and I have a neutral at zero on them, ship scanning, so I can quickly figure out, okay, that Hecate is, you know, I, it's a, for a, def, this will be a defense of upwells, so you can guarantee that um, Hecate is not going to stay, stay on field for long, if at all. Um... The enemy of choice, there. it's typical for high sec um, war decking folks to use battleships, slow moving battleships. And the funny thing is if, if they're using paladins, it means their transversal is pretty much, they don't have 200 meters per second velocity, which is needed to lower uh, the impact of cruise missiles from an upwell. So they're getting full damage from upwells. I have three jammers on them up, up well. I can perma jam uh, a high sec pirate solo players, or maybe th uh, three of their dual boxer um, characters. But their multi boxers, that's left up to my um, griffins. A paladin without ECM script, but with a sensor booster, uh, usually assumed it would be a scan resolution. Um, will typically be 16% uh, to jam it. Uh, 16 to 20% to jam. So a 1 die 6 chance um, is pretty good. Um, that that will, the more a multi-boxer is trying to multi-box, the more clients, the more stress jamming adds to their gameplay. And if you add in a neutral bumper, adds more stress and they start making mistakes and they start to bail because they're all every man from themselves and yeah there might be honor among thieves but don't expect any uh when uh, when there's any risk uh, these people are risk averse so the point is to stress them they'll start making mistakes because they're not used to this the risk increases they start to bail we warp in pvp um players to get DPS and tackle on anything that's trying, it's the stragglers, you know, that are trying to get away. Um, that's, that's the whole point. If a paladin with the ECCM script on a single sensor booster has a, almost a hundred uh, sensor strength, which means I have 10% chance to jam and that's, that's not good enough. Um, but, uh, I could go for the Lashaks, you know, Lashaks are also typical, Nesters are typical too. Um, it's just the Bastion mode of the Paladins, which is scary. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
if they're faster targets, um, there are tactics for it, but that's not a video. Um, it would involve uh, an anchor other than the Draugr uh, leading us in a neutral, doing just uh, double clicking in space perpendicular to the target to keep us at a range of 90 to 100. And that's a full-time job. <laughs> that's very micro intensive, but it works. Anyways, so what we've got is a situation where there's a possibility this might work against this force. If they're not using ECM, ECM scripts, if they believe Bastion makes them invulnerable, hopefully they don't bring it. I've seen lost mails where there's no ECCM scripts, so they might not know, but I highly doubt it. Um, but there's a chance, so great. Um, stuff this will work for is basically battleships. Um, it'll work on lesser things, uh, but then you get in a situation of uh, you need uh, an anchor so your orbit doesn't fluctuate, your speed doesn't fluctuate up and down as you're trying to orbit something that's moving too quickly. It's complicated. <laughs> but anyways, slow moving, this will be easy, no problem. Um, and what happens is I pre-group uh, pre -group any, like my crucifier has different types of drones. I make sure they're in folders, uh, favorited. Um, the hotkeys for drone launcher end, uh, the hotkey for return in orbit is home because if you press return in orbit on drones when you're going more than 3,000 meters per second they will st they will never go idle they'll always be at their top speed which is great um, well not top speed but they'll keep up with us on like warp drive um, I get my weapons pre overheated uh, you just shift left click your weapons and it pre overheats it um, anything get, gets in within range will die. Uh, the Draugr does 50% of the damage. Warriors do the rest. Um, the missiles are pretty cool to use uh, if you want to pew pew because you, you've already jammed your targets. You've got a, a griffin with a missile launcher. Might as well. Uh, the griffin does some damage um, with its uh, railguns. It's, it's not bad. Um, but yeah, anything that gets close will die. Um, the Curious is great because it can warp scramble um, the opposition, which is awesome at range. And it turns off their um, mic warp drive. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay, so I'll run through the paces here. Uh, the object is to align to the target at tether. Everything's overheated. Everything's fine. Everything's good. I align up. And so everybody's pointing the same way. I zoom out to make sure the vectors are all in line so I'm not making any mistakes. And then I squad warp. And I've learned that you can actually apply command bursts during warp. So just before we land, I hit the command bursts. The priority for everybody but the anchor is to hit F3 as soon as the warp active ends. So, 46, 48, 49, 50, 51, 2, 53, 54. That's how long it takes to get into orbit. Uh, and then I drop my drones and then order them to return, and they, they will return constantly. And that's what they'll do the entire time, and you know, until you shoot something and they'll go for it. Um, if there's a caddy long range a caddy on field which <laughs> it can't sit there too long because i'll pop it uh with my uh with my astro house um or jam it either or it's targeted up and i could launch my fighters at it and kill it um but yeah if it's on field we can take it out if it warps to us at range I can see it coming. It's trying to figure itself out. It's not pre-doing anything. We can, uh, it, it, 
it, it's impossible for it to actually get shots on. So, yeah, it's foolproof. Um, it's been battle tested. Uh, I've seen the counters to this. I've evolved the counters, the counters to it. So counters to the counters, and this is what we've got, and it's it works great. Uh, it takes about nine, ten seconds. You're invulnerable when you land to targeting. So when I'm hitting F3, and then I'm I'll do it again actually. So you're invulnerable to being targeted. You're still invulnerable. You're landing. You're still invulnerable for a few seconds after this. Once I do the regroup, the and we're orbiting, that's when you can start targeting us. And we're already up to 2,000. We're going to 3,000. With drugs, you can get to over 4,000. Yeah, uh, great transversal, great range. You're going to keep at range. Um, yeah. I've attempted to do MJD to intercept. It's possible. You have to be really good. I'm good enough to test it and actually get um, targeted up and shot. But there's nothing you can do. Uh, there's just we're just going too fast. Um, so yeah, I've tried everything. Um, it would be interesting that I would get more opportunities to do this in the field, um, and then I'd feel more comfortable posting this publicly because you know once the pirates see what I'm doing there's no turning back the thing is I always operate under like I've said before many times make yourself a hard target that you can do the same doctrine even if the enemy knows about it that's the doctrine you have to build because you can't operate on oh I'm gonna surprise him with this cute it's not gonna work it might work once but more often than not, you're going to use this stupid tactic and you're just going to get slaughtered. And you can only use it once. So you just wasted your time. Especially if you've told people to train up for it. You know, most of the, your people are care bears. So you want a strategy that works. It works well and works under duress and works even if they know you're coming. So that's the thing. So it's really fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, command burst, so 44, started at 44, invulnerable for about, yeah, 10 seconds of invulnerability is probably what you're getting, um, and it's, as soon as you start targeting, of course, you're going to be able to we should be underway by then. You'll be able to get gems off. And yeah, and it's just it, foolproof. At this point, we're just cruising. And we're just waiting for something to come for us, like an interceptor, when we can blap. Yeah, uh, lots of fun. Um, the, questions is, the questions are, can a crucifier survive being shot at by a sniper Hecate. We'll test it right now. Nope.
Oh my god, I hate the alphabetical order. Not strategic tactical. Oh, for Christ's sake. Tactical destroyer. Freaking clear. Hello, bye. And I'm sure they have level whatever, right? Now I won't be going very fast. This will be good enough. I don't really care. All right. So before I can actually do anything about it, I'm going to assume I can get a few shots off. So let's say that I was able to shoot at it. Was it Javelin? I think Javelin's a short range, right? Yeah, why would you use Spike as the long range? And it just didn't make any It's never made any sense. And I'll use that. And I'll go there. And optimal range. And I'll... Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. I'll try now. All right, so... Pew, pew. What range do I have? Oh, 62. I'm off. I thought I was able to hit. Okay. All right. So, what should I do? I will. Wait till my weapon timer goes off. Uh, yeah, I thought I was be able to hit it. Uh, I'll probably need non-faction ammo, and I could probably get away with unloading the script. What do you think? Load to cargo. What would happen? Ah, uh, maybe. All right. Let's try it out. Let's get, uh, let's get, uh, what, iron? Yeah, we'll get iron. I shall buy some iron, and it's actually, this is, this, um, the iron I'll be buying, Thread Grista, is actually quite cheap at Cheetah. It's, it's crazy. So, plug in some of that, and, uh, see if I can hit me. That'd be funny if there was absolutely no danger of the... Because basically you assume that it'll try to warp to your, you know, combat probe you and try to warp. And we'll test it out. We'll, we'll try targeting as I'm going away transversely-ish from... The Hecate. 
and we'll see if that works. I'm pretty sure it will. Do, 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 do. Bloop, bloop. Can I hit you? I can even hit you sit still, but it well, doesn't have the mic warp drive on, so yeah, good luck. Let's turn the mic warp drive on. Can you hit me now? I'm not moving. Head towards you. Stop shooting. All right. We'll get close to it and then go into orbit around. Now we're assuming that. See if you land, right? If we're landing, we it won't be perfectly zero transversal because we're not orbiting it we're orbiting something and it's on the circumference you know it's on the outside of the circle where we're going so we're going to be bending around the horizon for it so it's not going to be perfectly it's not going to be this perfect zero transversal as i'm going away from it it'll be at an angle um i just don't know which one should we could we definitely simulate it but yeah um i'll orbit that one all right and quickly go to minor freak and i'll start shooting and uh what do we got here spike no yeah okay so spike will definitely kill it Boom. So yeah, I mean, we could definitely test it, um, warp to zero and get it. And But it takes, see, the thing is, it's going to take him a few volleys to kill me. And he's got to land. I'm already set up in orbit. He's not going to be able to, he could try combat mode with me as I'm setting up, but it takes 10 seconds. Um, and then I'm in orbit. And if he's lucky, he can land then. But I'm already in orbit. I can see him coming. I can deal with it. Um, and they, if they give me enough time to actually launch drones and return them, as soon as I shoot at that Hecate, it's going to have drones on it. I won't have I won't have the ability to I've heard that you're able to drone bunny in during a war against war targets in high high and low sec which is amazing um, and makes sense because it's a crime watch 2 thing so it makes sense I haven't tested it but yeah the Hecate is a glass cannon I have killed it on test runs very quickly um, but yeah all I need to do is see it coming and it might get a few shots off on my crucifier if it's lucky if it combat probe me but he's tracking disrupted and then he can't hit me no matter what so i might get damaged but it, it takes him uh a few volleys and it's bam he's sensor damped so yeah um that is that is the ideal um Yeah, so, yeah, basically it's, you know, you, you undock, you align everybody. You squad warp. 100 meters, 100 kilometers to your neutral uh, squad mate who's not in the same squad because you don't want uh, your anchor to start trying to regroup on you. So that's key. Pre-overheat your guns. Make sure everything's good. Make sure your vector's good. Squad warp. 
and in warp will land. And as we're landing, I do command burst. And as the uh, warp active uh, finishes, I wait for it. Hit F3, 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 regroup, orbit, make sure I orbit the, um, the squad member who is outside of regroup command thing and will not regroup on you. You do the drone thing. It's launched. If there's a caddy on field, you switch quickly to the crucifier and damp that out. And I doubt they'll know to get a long-range sniper for caddy, but whatever. We'll see. I've seen them fly a, a Hakati before. It's always been short range on the kill nails, but yeah. Um, the chance of jam is 10% for a ECM'd, ECCM'd Paladin and Bastion. Uh, usually it's 16%. If you're lucky, you can get 20% jam on these. These are max skilled. Um, I'll put the fits in the I'll put the fits in the description. The implants for it, uh, hopefully I've got Centurion, is low grade. Uh, it costs about 800 million um, total currently at Cheeta. Um, this is the most, this is the key though. The long range targeting, 5% extra range. That's pretty cool. Um, high speed maneuver increases your cap stability. I have skill plans for griffins with lesser skills like you can even do i've even got an alpha skill it'll force us to go slower but yeah we're above 3000 meters per second yeah uh, the point of an alpha pilot it might be a very low chance you might get one successful jam off during the entire engagement but if you do you feel like a god so it's the stress it's not we want to perma jam them it's when we want to pressure uh, a combat team, an enemy force, which is risk averse and really doesn't have the combat experience to deal with stress. And they start to panic. And panic isn't a fear. Panic is you don't feel panic. You just start to make really dumb decisions and make mistakes. You start to make mistakes. Mistakes pile up. And then their selfish natures to save their own skins kicks in and everybody scatters. So, yeah, that's the tactic. Um, yeah, and the upwell comes into play just to jam their solo players and their, and their duo boxers to cut those out because you know they're not going to panic. So putting jam, a uh, small chance of jam on them is pointless because they only have a, a, a very small amount of clients to watch. It's a piece of cake for them. It doesn't add too much stress. Target the multi-boxers adds the stress. That's all it is. And add a bumper in. Uh, I like Cinnables. They, uh, they are, you can get them really fast. And neutral cinnabals, by the way. So you can get suicide attacked, but they, they, as long as they don't have tornadoes sitting around to gank you, you're fine. Uh, and bumping something like that, scattering their fleet, their Lashaks have a range of probably about 30 maximum for repping, uh, effective, and... If you can bump something beyond that, if you get a really good bump and you get something beyond that, that cuts that um, individual, that uh, individual client out of rep range, might be able to kill it with the upwell. It might. Um, it's difficult. They have MJDs equipped, so they could get away from any um, follow-up bumps um, and warp away and come back. And it would be slightly difficult to get... Um, a siren on them because they're so damn slow unfortunately uh yeah drugs uh, dose three uh overclocker sends you up, up past four thousand for uh your stagecoach doctrine it's just awesome um yeah that's that's the whole introduction of this idea um it's not completely immune there are counters to it. And thankfully, the biggest counter, a Cerberus uh, task force 
for the enemy is no longer long range. They can't get amazingly long range uh, missiles anymore. So, yay! Um, so that that uh, that neutered that problem. I didn't. I had a counter to it. You just switch out. You have a bunch of uh, um, crucifiers with uh, guided disruptors. That takes care of that. But yeah, um, thank you CCP for nerfing the uh, assault uh, assault cruisers. Heavy ones. Um, <laughs> and that's about it. Cover pretty much everything. Uh, fits will be in the description. Uh, I won't be going into the alpha fits and the lesser skilled fits. This is just an introduction of what I can bring to the field um, in the event of hostilities. If we have to defend an upwell against a force like this, um, and I can add jamming to the field um, with speed tank, with a usually 60% chance to jam battleships with sensor boosts on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You get more chances too. The the lesser ships have lower sensor strength. And yeah, you get increased jamming ability. Um, yeah, I won't really talk about, I've got videos of describing the, uh, the micro-intensive, like, you know, it's basically you have to double click in the direction like I'll click on one of these guys you basically have to keep you're going like 4,000 so you've got to constantly every few seconds constantly be double clicking in the direction just to keep you at um, 90 90 just under 90 degrees and that will keep you uh, between 90 kilometers and 100 kilometers and it's very difficult to do and you can't do anything else it just it's just you're hyper focused on doing entirely that the entire time <laughs> it can get quite maddening but it's totally worth it all right um i think that's it i think i've covered everything um hope you enjoyed that yeah that's what i can bring the field um jammers jam modules to stress multi-boxers this will uh, most likely not it it works better if your enemy is multi-boxers and it definitely works great uh it works awesome it does the job but uh without support nothing you're just you're just aggravating them you know if i was just me without any neutral bumpers um i wouldn't be able to scare them off you know, they'll eventually RF my structure. So I cannot do it alone, but it will definitely tick off a large force. And I'm talking about two dozen alts on field for the enemy that I'm dealing with. Um, if there were less, like they're half that, then we could have some real fun with jamming. Um, and they'd probably just take off because there's nothing much you can do once the damage of my fort starts supplying so yeah it'd be fun and i'll try to field it uh tomorrow um but it's i doubt it's going to do any good uh they'll uh, they they can't be completely retarded they can't be so dumb as to assume bastion makes them immune to ecm and just fail to bring along ECM, ECCM scripts. That, that would, that's the miracle I'm hoping for, basically. <laughs> and I didn't shoot them when they landed on my Astro House, so maybe they think the no core means I can't use the guns. But it's just, they would have to have forgotten what it was like during the change from no cores to cord upwells. They, they have to have people aware of that. They can't be that new, can they? So, yeah, I doubt it. So, it would take a miracle for me to deal with them. Um, if I have a couple of bumpers that get give a couple of good bumps, might be able to scatter them. That would be fun. But, like I said, I started a new job. This is my only chance to deal with it. If they'd reinforced me, say, today, I'd probably not be able to show up for this at all. 
uh, my niece's work schedule and the fact that apparently, according to rumor, I haven't tested it yet, but uh, the reinforcement time takes longer than two weeks, uh, which is what they said would happen but they never impl implemented it the last time I changed my, uh, back in October. So if something's changed since October, I'll definitely test it out. But for now, just treat it as a rumor, um, unless you've actually experienced it yourself. But yeah, I mean, my stuff is going to be gone for sure. And yeah, that takes care of my, it's, it's kind of cynical, but it means I can get rid of my clone service, which I've, been keeping my upwells field for because of that because I've got like some of my upwells have 60 plus clones now which I counsel people not to because it just you don't need it anymore with NPC stations being able to switch clones without cooldown so get the hell out of my upwells so this is a, this is a way to do that and not worry about it which is cool anyways have yourself a good one try to watch this again and see if I missed anything but I don't think I did yeah I originally started out with blackbirds moved on to griffins I had the uh, draugr with the blackbirds at the in in the beginning so that was fun and then I just switched for griffins because I like the speed tank more not the extra range I added the shotgun um, because woohoo rear turret gunner and then the hikati counter came along I went with the crucifier so I added that the dicky seat and then, yeah, it all came together, especially when I started learning about Command Burst during Warp. Um, regroup um, is awesome. Um, and the recall drones, but orbit will always be like warping behind you. Those three things are just what makes this so cool. Cooler than it, than it could potent, uh, cool, it, it makes me able to enter orbit really quick. Um, I've got the command burst off. I don't have to worry about people getting PvP flags and being disabled from getting any bursts anymore if they're outside of Alliance. They've got that first burst. If there are outside of Alliance characters in my squad in the Stagecoach Doctrine thing I've got set up, I can s switch out my um, my skirmish um, rapid reinforcement with um, uh, interdiction maneuver. Um, that will increase the range of my scrams if I've got a curies along and you know etc etc it just it just builds I've, got, I've tested out the tech 2 variants way more fun it's just I don't have the experience to warrant me getting overconfident I need to ex uh, get some experience under my belt using the cheaper tech 1 versions to be able to feel confident enough to go okay now I can upgrade now I can start risking more and more because it makes sense, I can do it. I won't I'll be overwhelmed and start making stupid mistakes because I'm trying to make things too complicated for myself. Um, so this is fun. It's enjoyable. Uh, but yeah, these, these neckbeard nerds are just, you know, they. I suspect they've been sicked onto me because uh, the man from War 4 was banned because of a petition of mine. And he's figured it out either being told by friends at CCP because he sucks up to them so badly. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, nobody operates in good faith, especially in pirate, uh, high sec, and CCP. Do you expect CCP operating in good faith? Anyway, so we'll see. Um, I expect them to torment me as much as possible, which won't work. Um, because, yeah, if they land with, they will, they're, cowards they'll land if they know about eccm scripts they'll have it loaded i'll figure that out by ship scanning them um and if they've got the long range caddy i'll know that too everything yeah and then if they have vccm scripts on their um paladins i won't even bother um i why show your hand why i just be showing off at that point there's no point in doing a live fire exercise showing your hand when there's no point point. there's always like you know I'll probably go alpha state for a while uh, maybe come back if I'm interested in the game you know I could join a coalition that are anti-SRS you gotta try that for a bit um, yeah there's a whole bunch of options really um, 
but yeah, my, my first inclination is just go to Alpha and just go play another game, which I am enjoying very much right now. Uh, don't need this game. Um, I like mining. I like exploiting the resources of the universe, the solar system, our real-life solar system. I love podcasts about that kind of thing. It's so fun. Um, but yeah, I... You can't get that enjoyment out of CCP anymore because they've sucked all the life out of a solo player's enjoyment of mining. I mean, sure, you could fall asleep doing high-sec mining, but what's the point in, you know, ice belt mining or, worse yet, doing those stupid uh, peanuts for, you know, you're just wasting your time doing uh, moon mining in high-sec. You know, it's, it's no fun. I just fall asleep. And they've taken all the joy out of low-sec mining completely. And even they've hobbled null-sec solo mining too. It's just all about the blocks and all about the, you know, the massive fleets. And they've just, they're so, they don't give any options anymore. And they've stripped options from it. And it just feels so cynical and pandering to people who kiss their ass. And that's how CCP operates. So, yeah. Yeah, probably go play Star Citizen, try it out, not spend any money on it, see if I can do that, um, and play Elite Dangerous, and hopefully another game comes out that uh, can replace this. And it's just like Ed TV or The Truman Show. You know, once it's over, everybody change the channel. You know, it's, it's no sweat to just drop everything, you know. It, you, know you had your fun. You play this game for fun, not as an investment, right? Anyways, have yourself a good one.